Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're going over why nutritional science can be so confusing. But before we get into that, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos on resolving pains, preventing injury, and optimizing your overall performance. You don't wanna miss it. Ready? Here we go. All right guys, the topic of the day, why nutritional science is so confusing. Now, you wanna eat well, we know that, but every time you go to research what is healthy eating or what quality eating is and what's healthy and what's not, there's contradicting information on it. One research study shows this, another research study shows this. It's healthy to eat paleo, it's healthy to eat keto, it's healthy to eat vegan. Which one is it? It's really no wonder that we're all running around in circles right now because of all the different information that is out there regarding nutritional science. But today, I've got four main reasons why nutritional science is so confusing and why you shouldn't feel bad about having a hard time figuring out what actually eating healthy is based off of all the research that you're trying to look up. And by the way, if you want to take advantage of my free nutritional guidelines, take a moment and download that in the description. It's absolutely free and it's 30 pages packed full of information on the solid basics that we have a pretty good scientific grip on already. So that'll at least give you a good base to work off of. But anyway, let's get into the video. Reason number one, the research for nutritional science is still so young. In fact, it's so young that it is still in its infancy compared to other sciences such as chemistry. To give you an idea, chemistry has been around since about 12,000 BC when they first reported metals and started actually manipulating them. The science of nutrition has only been around since about the 1700s. In 1842, they first discovered that they could actually cure scurvy through nutritional deficiency. And then in the mid 1900s, they actually just discovered that there were vitamins A, D, E, K, and some of the B vitamins and even folate. So compared to chemistry, which has been around 10 times longer than the actual research on nutritional science, it is really just a infant wobbling around the study of nutrition. Science takes time to mature. It took about 200 years for chemistry to actually make its first steps as far as any progress goes. And as far as nutritional science, well, we're just about getting to that 200 year point where we're starting to learn a little bit more about things. But even still, it takes time and it takes practice and repetition for us to truly hone in on a science like this. Reason number two, funding. Most funding goes to disease treatment, not nutritional preventative techniques or measures. So we're seeing a lot of the actual money being thrown into disease treatment, not the funding of nutritional studies for preventative purposes. Now, when there is funding for nutritional studies, it's also usually driven by interested parties or parties that are involved in that market overall. So the funding that we do see for nutrition often comes from interested parties that have some, some skin in the game and they really need to prove a point. Unfortunately, there's something known as confirmation bias and usually when we're looking for a certain result, we tend to find that even when those studies are being presented by some third party and they're being funded though by an interested party overall. So it's a little bit biased and the nutritional research is questionable sometimes. Let's leave it at that. On top of that, most nutritional studies that we see are unfortunately done as observational studies. Now these are some of the lowest 
quality studies that you can get because they rely on our ability to remember what we ate. And some of them might be reaching back pretty far in our past. And realistically, who can really remember what they ate for breakfast yesterday? Or maybe the day before? You tell me that, and I think you're doing pretty well as far as your memory and cognitive ability. But most people will get it wrong. We're also terrible at judging measurements overall. So if it asks for a measurement amount or a certain amount overall, there's a good chance that we've terribly, terribly gone wrong in the amounts that we think we've actually eaten. Reason number three, confounding variables make it nearly impossible to prove food's effect in an individual. The tools that we use to measure are always limited and what we eat doesn't have an immediate effect in our body so it takes time and it would be nearly impossible to track the amount of time that it would need to actually prove and the circumstances nonetheless as well. So first of all confounding variables these are things like age, race, sex, where you live, who you're living with, the dog that you have, the cat that you have, the variable of your weather and the sun, the amount of sun that you have. It, it can go and just about stretch to about any extent that might have an effect on your overall health and could change your health, not just the food that you're eating alone. Next, the measurement tools that we have when doing the research are always limited. First off, nutrition labels can be up to 50% wrong by the FDA's approval. So they're actually allowed to have that much air or up to that much amount of air as far as the labeling goes. So right there, if you're using nutrition to track for your observational study, things could be going very wrong already to begin with. Then on top of that, once we eat the food, it's no guarantee the amount that our bodies are actually absorbing once it's in our digestive system. So for me, that could be very different from any of you that are watching today, the amount that's getting absorbed depending on what we ate. It's a personal thing based off of our internal environment and our gut microbiome, things like that that affect it. If we're taking calorie burn estimates, those can be wrong for anywhere from 3 to 45% as far as the overall air goes with that. And based off of your dieting history, your weight history, that can actually also change the amount of calories we burn. So you can see right there, there's also a lot of variables that are going to affect the tools that we would generally use to track things such as calorie burns or calorie intake. Lastly on this point, what you eat doesn't take immediate effect in your body or change you right away. It would be something that would have to take a study of about 30 years to actually prove with the circumstances being very controlled, we're talking like living in a chamber with uh, you and you alone. And uh, who's gonna actually sign up to do something like that? Uh, I'm pretty sure no. So it's nearly impossible to truly isolate out all those variables so that it really can prove the effect of the nutrition. And my final point on why nutrition research and science is so confusing. You can't always assume that the research that's provided applies directly to you and oftentimes it is being poorly reported because of the fact that nutrition is very confusing to begin with. So first of all, you can't always apply studies directly to you or assume that they apply to you. Why might this be? Well, because the majority of the studies have, first of all, young and healthy individuals that live, oh, say, on campus and need a paycheck. They're the study subjects a lot of the times. They tend to be male most frequently as well. There's also studies that are mainly focused on the sick. So these are the ones that are focusing on disease uh, treatment, which would be like obesity or uh, metabolic X syndrome, those types of things where we're looking into that. 
or we're looking at elite athletes and how nutrition affects their performance. And finally, looking at non-human subjects, rabbits, mice, things like that that are in a cage. So they don't always directly apply to you based off of what the study finds. You have to be very careful of what was being researched, who was being researched, and um, how it might truly apply in the overall big picture of things. Now, the final part of this point, nutrition is not always reported well by those who are reporting it in the media. And you can't blame them. It's already confusing enough to begin with, right? But they tend to overemphasize single study results and they tend to get uh, a little bit carried away with their clickbait type stuff. So if a single study finds a certain result, then they might get a pretty big uh, turnaround or viewing of their written article based off of what they present. Well, they might not be able to actually interpret the conclusion of those studies that well either if they're not truly a nutritional scientist. So all these things go into them reporting and then it gets fed out to you guys who then gets even further more confused at this point. So, yeah. And there, my friends, you have it. The four main reasons that nutritional science is so confusing and you're having a hard time figuring out where to begin because you can't get a straight answer. Now, I will say, in most cases, people are trying to do things that they don't necessarily need to because they don't even have the nutritional basics down. And like I said earlier in the video, take a moment to drop by the description and grab my free guidelines to nutrition. It's called Recalibrate. It's giving you a baseline to work off of, of all the scientific stuff that we do know is pretty well backed at this point. So take advantage of that. It's a click away and it'll get you going in the right direction. I hope that this gives you some relief maybe <laughs> and some clarity overall as to why the nutritional sciences just can't get it right right now and maybe give them a little bit of grace for the next 200 years or so and we should be seeing some good progress then. It might not affect your lifetime but at least your grandchildren might reap the benefits of it. So we're working at it and it's always a work in progress. If you guys like this video make sure you let me know by clicking that thumbs up down below and share it with a friend. You know, they're all confused about nutrition as well, so you might as well uh, get them in the loop and have them understand a little bit about it better at this point. So pass that their way. And be sure to drop any comments or questions below that you might have. I would be more than happy to answer them for you. If you guys have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button. Every Thursday, we're putting out a video on how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injury, and overall optimize your human performance. Pretty cool. And lastly, if you want something specifically tailored to you, need help with your nutrition coaching, and you want to start to build strength or lose weight, any of those things could apply, head over to the website. That link is down in the bio as well, or down in the description there as well. And go ahead and fill out that coaching application. We'll get you headed in the right direction in no time. I want to thank you guys for watching today. See you next time.